Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and you join us back on our XMOD Spec Defender 90. Now, as you guys saw in the last episode, we are gonna be converting this to a 300 TDI. And it currently has a 2.5 litre diesel, or it did have fitted to it. We've removed that, and we've also removed the engine from a 300 TDI Discovery 1. So guys, in the last episode, we fitted a number of items, serviceable items to this engine. And if you haven't seen that episode, I'll leave a link in the description box below, where you can check out part one to this conversion. Now, in today's episode, we just wanna fit some, some more of those items to the engine before finally dropping it into the engine bay. And hopefully we can get that done today and mocked up and mounted. Now, I've just picked up from the supplies the turbo cartridge itself. Now I have, uh, for those of you who have been watching the channel for quite a while, you have seen me fit a cartridge before to the turbo. And this is actually the turbo itself. And then you've got the housing and the exhaust side. Now those aren't required when, you're, when you've got a worn turbo. So I'm just gonna fit the turbo itself and I'm gonna recondition it. You guys can watch me how I do that. Now I have also got the rear main oil seal to block gasket. You need one of those. We've got a timing case cover gasket. And we've also got the all important T seals for a 300 TDI. So we're gonna get all of this fitted, and then hopefully we can mock this engine up into the bay, we can mock up the housing onto our LT77 gearbox, see what modifications are required there, get that housing bolted up, take it all off, put it back into 3-inch TDI, offer the TDI into the engine bay, and hopefully get this engine fitted. So uh, grab a drink, and let's get this thing started.
Okay guys, so we have pretty much spent half a day on this now. Um, I think we're in a good position. You may have actually seen us uh, try and change the T-seals. Now the T-seals are on the main, main bearing cap on the end of the crankshaft. Now, every time we've tried to do this previously, we've always struggled with it and we thought, you know, we'll give it another go. It's just a real pain, just, isn't it? Just, so just get mashed um, up. But it's just a terrible design. There is a Land Rover fitting tool, but even then it's still not that good. And to be honest, uh, modern sealant has come a long way. Um, and if you Google it just before you do comment, oh, that's not correct, you know, because you saw us inject uh, high temp, essentially high temp RTV um, and a gasket jointing compound. Um, if you give it a quick Google, it is very common for that to be done as opposed to, you know, struggling with the cork or the rubber gaskets. Um, there is a certain way of doing it. I think I did actually show you guys how we do it. You've got to block one of the holes to make sure it's protruding out the back of the seal. Uh, we're confident that is sealed and we're confident that will last as long as the original seals. Uh, only time will tell, I suppose, but um, we'll know almost immediately because it will start leaking out the back of the main flywheel housing. And uh, that's a risk we're prepared to take. We're confident it's sealed. Uh, same again with the sump. We were going to use a paper gasket. Uh, we decided against it. Uh, I think we actually ordered the wrong gasket. I'm not sure why, but it's like a paper gasket. Um, again, we just used the high temp sealant. Um, that's what came off of it. That's what's gone back onto it. So we've changed the brake vacuum servo. We've changed the clutch, the flywheel, the main... Uh, the main rear main oil seal and the rear main to block the T-seals. We have give everything a spruce up. Um, we're just trying to work through the engine mounting brackets. I haven't actually got onto the turbo today yet. We've done a bit of running around. It's, a couple of things have taken a bit longer today. Um, but we're just reading through the instructions for our engine mounting bracket kit. And it's, it's actually surprising how far this thing has got to move forward. So the original engine bracket would have sat around here. And obviously with the LT77 and the original two, two and a half litre diesel, uh, the bracket is it wants to be totally forward. But these are non weld on brackets, so we should be able to bolt this up. We've got to take a, a salvage a little bit of the rear of the mount, the original one, we can get this all mocked up and we can actually get this thing dropped in uh, tomorrow. I do just want to make sure that I can, we can drop it in, there's no problem with dropping it in tomorrow, but I, I noticed the turbo's got a bit too much play than we're happy with really, and it? yeah. it's just a little bit suspect. So uh, we've gone ahead and got a brand new uh, OE cartridge, which is actually one of their, it's not a hybrid, but it's got like a, on the impeller, they've CNC'd it differently. Yeah, I think um, it's got more fins on it as well, so I can... It spools up like 500 RPM sooner, so that'll be really nice. Um, so tomorrow we're gonna strip down this, I had to run and get a gasket, we're gonna paint up the inlet, we're gonna clean out the mess that the EGR has made, now we've blanked that off from the inlet, we're gonna spritz up the manifold and rebuild that turbo, whack it back together, and then we're gonna test fit this into the bay tomorrow and we can hopefully get those footwells welded up before we do that. Um, however, it won't hinder us if we do decide to. It would just give us that bit more working room. Um, but it's, it's, it's gone pretty well, to be fair. So, so far, so good. This, this is one of these days we just had to knock out, get all the service was done, do all the maintenance on the engine, and then tomorrow we can install it, and um, hopefully it should be sitting in there and looking fresh. You know, we've taken the time to paint these items and just do that little bit extra um, you know, as if it was our own car, because I think that's that's important, isn't it? Make, making it look fresh. You know, we haven't actually rebuilt the engine, but we have done a considerable amount of overhaul works just to ensure that this thing... It's about the only thing we haven't done, is it? Just rebuild the yeah, that, internals. That's pretty much it. The only thing we haven't done is rebuild the internals, but we know it runs well. But it's looking great. It's, it's looking really fresh. There's just a few more bits to zhuzh up, if you will. And, uh, and then tomorrow, it should be sitting in there and looking really good. That'd be nice. It will be nice, yeah. It'd be nice to see it mounted, mounted up to an LT77. Not that many modifications, you know. We've got a, we've got to drill out and, and re-tap one of the lower holes on here. We've got to grind a part of the, the, the lower housing off to clear the slave. Um, take two threaded studs out because they won't fit and then it just clicks straight together um, and remove one of the dowels. And then, yeah, it just goes straight in. So, pretty cool overall. We, we, I think we, we've made some good progress and we'll see you guys in the morning.
So next day here, and this morning, all we've done is modified the right-hand engine mount. We've just chopped off the little bit we didn't need, flat it off, given a bit of paint. We brought the engine now off the stand so that we can now attack this turbo. The inlet, we want to give a clean, a spritz of paint. We're going to install a new turbo cartridge, which is a slightly hybrid variant of just a standard turbo cartridge. Uh, that is all we have left. Bertie has to do one pulley on the front of the engine. We've got the turbo to install. And then all we're going to be doing is offering this engine straight in the bay. So this is going to be a good day. Hopefully we can do something with the footwells, but it's not going to get in our way uh, with the engine because it's actually on the, on the outer sides of the footwells. So the engine won't, won't be in the way at all. So let's get this turbo cartridge fitted, fit that pulley and get this engine in the bay. So guys, if I grab hold of the impeller shaft, this is why we're changing the cartridge. If, you, if I, there's a shaft going all the way through to the other side, and there is a bearing that sits in the middle, which is where the oil will run through and lubricate it. Now when a turbo wears, uh, if you move it up and down, left and right, uh, you can essentially feel the wear of the turbo. Now this has what I would suggest is slightly more than I'm happy with. Uh, it's very minute, but I can sort of pull the turbo and make contact with the fins on the outside of the casing. So, I sort of hear it. It's just a bit too much, so. We're essentially now gonna be removing the inlet manifold. We're going to be cleaning that because the EGR has made a bit of a mess inside there. Um, we blanked that off as part of the conversion. So you can see all the, the coking up of it. We're removing that, cleaning it out, giving it a spritz of silver. Then we can get to the turbo manifold itself. We'll remove that, we'll remove the turbo drain feeds. We'll spritz this back. We'll change the cartridge, which is there, and we'll spray the outer casing in an aluminium silver. We should be able to get to the block then. We can paint the block a little bit. Again, just a bit of a spritz up and then this engine will be fitted to the engine bay. So guys, that is our turbo cartridge removed. Now it is a bit of hassle, but it's exactly what um, a turbo rebuilder would do. Uh, they strip it all down, they fit a balanced cartridge, a brand new cartridge, which is here. They paint all the, all the surrounds and the housings and the manifold, and then uh, put a hefty price tag on top. Now it's exactly the same thing. This comes with a balance certificate. You can see the, the difference in there, but this one will have no play on the, uh, on the, on the impeller shaft there. So, one of those things, you've got to be a bit patient, take your time, heat everything up, just to make sure all those bolts snap. If they do snap, then unfortunately, it's a painful process of drilling or a machine shop where you can actually get a, you know, a proper straight drill on it, a time insert or a hello coil. Um, but that came out with relative ease. Um, now I can just essentially put a new cartridge in, assemble it and throw the engine in. But uh, I just want to go a little bit further here. And whilst we've got everything removed, this is now essentially, I can put that straight in the bin, but I will be taking the, uh, one of the bolts out of it. So what are we doing now 
is painting the manifold in a VHT black. And then I'm gonna be painting the actual turbo housing in an aluminum silver and the actuator is gonna be painted gold. Now, you can see here, there's nothing to it. It's literally just a housing. So there's no reason not to just rebuild the turbo as opposed to just replacing the whole unit. Um, the cost of these are about 150 quid for a good unit. You want one with a balance certificate. You don't want those cheap Chinese ones. They, I fitted one before and the bolt wasn't done up. It fell off, destroyed uh, the turbo. Uh, didn't do any damage to the engine, but this was a long time ago. Um, so I always want to buy one now that's OEM. Um, you know, you want it to last a long time. So it's got to have a balance certificate, a good OEM, a good manufacturer. And in an ideal situation, you want, I always go with a Mellet cartridge. I think they're fantastic. I've never had any issues with those. Uh, but yeah, so what we're gonna do now is clean up the housings, get everything a fresh coat of paint, reassemble it all. Then we can put it all onto the, the engine. Uh, Leon is just cleaning the inlet, painting that up. And then hopefully we can test fit this engine. Guys, we finished up on our turbo reconditioning and like I said, we've got a brand new cartridge in the center. We have just painted the original housings either side and the actuator because we know it all works. We did test it. You might've seen it in the time lapse with our air hose. We just operated the actuator and make sure it worked. We also freed off the sticky arm uh, on this side. So the actuator can now freely dump any excess boost. Uh, we've got our blanking EGR plate and that should be ready to go onto our new engine. But it's looking as good as a brand new turbo supplied by anyone else would would be and it's uh, going to do exactly the same job so that was really cool really good fun to do that and let's install it onto our engine it's going to look great The time is finally here. We've got everything prepared. The engine is fully built up. 
Uh, as I said, we've, we've changed the clutch, the rear main oil seal, the rear main oil seal to block gasket. We've got a new spigot. We've got a whole new cam belt kit, water pump, turbo cartridge has been replaced, all new gaskets throughout. Uh, rocker cover seal, brake vacuum pump, new sump itself, new alternator, all new tensioners, idlers, aux belt. This thing is gonna be uh, a real, real good engine. And hopefully this means that we'll see, you know, uh, for the future, it's only minor servicing throughout. Obviously this thing will need major servicing down the line, but uh, hopefully we've knocked it all out pretty much as much as possible before we can throw this engine in. So uh, let's get this engine mocked up and actually bolted in place. And we can see what this thing looks like in an old X mod. So guys, there we have it. The engine is finally fitted. And it's been a couple of days actually just doing the prep work and you know, those little extras where we're getting the painting and stuff like that does take its time. But I think the overall result is really worth it. It's gonna be really cool to see this thing sitting here and it looks just so natural sitting there. I mean, as it should, these, uh, these MODs and Defenders did come out with 300 TDI, so it's sitting in there really comfortably. And uh, it's just really cool to know that obviously what we've done to the engine, this thing should last a, a, a real lifetime uh, in there. And it'll be cool to hear this thing fire up. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. We've done a lot of work in this episode. I hope you guys can appreciate that. Do leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a follow on Instagram, which is at Juice Motors. And we'll see you guys for this next episode. Hopefully this thing fires up.